So the samurai would put perfume in their helmet because if they if they lost, right? If you were a, a, a high-level samurai and you lost, they cut your head off, right? Better alive. That was how it was done. And then there were up up until the end, the middle of the 19th century, the end of the battle, there was this thing called the recognition of the heads. <laughs> So you say, yeah, you know, and I say, oh, yeah, you know, because, you know, uh, ten years ago, everybody was friends, it was just the politics put them on their sides. And so, oh, yeah, I remember him. <laughs> so they put perfume in their helmet so that if they lost, you know, it would be shameful when their head was presented. <laughs> they couldn't have been that afraid of dying and say, you know, <laughs> my helmet, but that, of course, is not the Buddha that Aikido has to do with. Aikido is all subhate, all subhate ikasa. Giving life. Every aspect of Aikido is done with an energy and a feeling of giving life. And, uh, and of course, historically, that's what happened when Japan went into the state of civil war that began in the Middle Ages. Right, Budo was, you know, for fighting, winning the losing. That was something that sometimes points that out. And of course, if you think about it, the boo of giving, you know, what does attack come from? What does conflict come from? It comes from scarcity, or you know, not enough, or him, not me, or you know, they did this, I must do this, and all this kind of stuff. Right? So this kind of energy, the energy of extension of energy, the extension of love as a gift, how can they, you know, how can there be war? So this is the real boo. Now, according to those, of course, this is also the real Japanese boo. As far as I know, love as a uh, key idea in Budo, as far as I know, I haven't seen it in any of Chinese stuff that I've read or heard about. But you know. And of course, love is that kind of thing. It's an extension. It's not, you know. And we're not, you know, the culture doesn't want us to do that. The culture wants us to think about ourselves. You know, and think about ourselves as a success within the terms of the culture. And we're, we're, we're given rewards for that. But then that sets up competition. So winning and losing. And I feel there's no winning and losing, there's no other, there's no good and bad. And there's a thing I don't, I don't know exactly, but it's more or less, well, since I said something like, Aikido is a religion which is not a religion. <laughs> right? In other words, it's not dogma and it's not you have to think a certain way and follow a certain thing, but yet it gives what a religion is supposed to give. Contact with all. And Bhagavad Gita talks about that too. I think that's on, on the site actually, where he says one of the, the look, I think I, I forgot what, the, what, what category you want to put it under, but he says, right, to have it all, an immediate contact with God, no intermediary, straight hot line. <laughs> that's the base. And it's true for every human being, every one of the divine God. As opposed to religion, to say you have to do this, and don't do this, and you have to listen to this, and do it this way, and it's just, this is what you're doing. No, 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 no. Right? Straight. So, 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 Buckman Circle are using American language, it's straight hotline. <laughs> I can pick up the phone and it's right there. I do the same thing. And an idea of that hotline, which is there, is made apparent through the techniques. So the techniques of Aikido are called Kami Waza. Right? Kami meaning 
God divine, right? Meaning that, and that's what they do, they put you in tune with, in contact with the Kami, the heart of Kami, the heart of the origin. And because of that, they act as purifiers for the practice of Adios Misogi. So these ideas, which show some say repeated again and again to a lot of deaf ears, are essential in your orientation, right? Like in Buddhism, in advanced forms of Tibetan Buddhism, they talk about the base and the view, you know, things like that. Same thing in Ikea, you have to have a base and a view, more or less an orientation, right? From which then come to you, but can come to you through or with this practice. And in a sense, the universe is, is recreating itself every moment. <laughs> or every, we can't even say moment, but somehow it's, it's, it's not, you know, done and gone until boom or whatever. It doesn't work that way. And that, that fact, or whatever you want to that, 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 whatever actually happens, that's what happens in Aikido. You don't move out of nothing, something. And that, that is also expressed in the Kototama rhythm, the Kototama origin of the moves. Right? So there is nothing, and then soon appears. Now, who appears? And then it can go, ah, oh, 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 oh. So it, There's this apparent, apparent something which is also nothing. How does it appear? What is it? Right? And we have to go back to that point, to that point of absolute origin with the practice. So that gives an idea. No. Well, of course, you read Osam said, I'll just read this other thing, I have to look at it more carefully, where he's talking about at one point, and all light double up himself appeared. Right. I think they used to practice together. <laughs> well, he, to, he, he talks about that, you know, when he's talking to the disciples of Kodi Sensei, because they would understand, he would never say that to the Aikido group. <laughs> they would have, uh, the old man doing it again, oh shit, not, why can't we practice? What's he talking about? Light? And of course, um, now, the creation of a double is actually a Tibetan practice that you can learn. It's called the Lutheran body, the Mayak body, or the six yogas of Naropa. You can learn how to do it. So what, what you see is that a lot of things happen spontaneously to O Sensei that appear as practices achieving those results in other, you know, in Tibet, for instance, or India, China. So this is you no, know, this is why this is what works. That's what Aikido is the way. It's a way. It's not something you do in a gym, you know, or you do in your sports class at school, or, you know, or you do, you know, as a hobby. <laughs> and it really is comparable to, you know, advanced tantric practices in Tibet, or advanced Taoist practices. And so it has results like that, results which, which are not part of daily life, you know. <laughs>